what advice do you give those people who go, I don't want to go do the entrepreneur thing or I can't because there's not enough time for family. <laughs> you, 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 t- you alluded to your kids there a second ago and making the bars. Let's back up a little bit. Uh, as I alluded to in the intro, my, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big preacher of 15, 16 hour work days and up early and stay late and you're what's possible. And, uh, there are no impediments, get out there and do it. And at the same time, I always get pushback from people who go, yeah, but what about kids? Where's the kid time? Where's the me time? Where's the, where's the, the, the wife time. And I always say, I raised three great kids. They're 24, 22 and 20. Now, uh, they moved here to Tennessee with me. Uh, and what I made a point to do when they were kids was quality time, not necessarily quantity time. I never missed a sporting event. I never missed a a uh, recital. I never missed, you know, musical things, any of those things. I was at all of those, but then I gave them quality time. That is uninterrupted, no television, no movies, no video games, no nothing, uninterrupted time. And that worked out really well for me. And then they would go to bed and I would go back to work. Um, that, that was kind of my process. And I was able to have, uh, and, and again, I, I think that three very, very great, great kids uh, that I see every single day what is your, if, if, if you were hearing the same thing, having a family and obviously his family is so important to you, what advice do you give those people who go, I don't want to go do the entrepreneur thing, or I can't because there's not enough time for family, or I'm in the middle of business and it's failing because family time and, and business is, 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 is pulling me apart. One has to give. It took me years to figure this out, but like you said, quality over quantity. Now I coach my daughter's wrestling team. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's number one. I used to coach my son's soccer team. That's number two. We spend quality time together when we can, we do things that are like, so I train my kids train this week. My, my son, my 13 years off of school, we've been training together. So we've been doing my entire workout and he's, he's crushing it. Right. My daughter, you know, we, we go to meets together. We go to, um, tournaments together. Like the other weekend, she had a wrestling meet in Clarksville. Now, you know, you know, geography. Mm -hmm. So we were there till 9 p.m. We drove through the night because we had a a frig. We had to be at 8 a.m. at a soccer game, arrived at 3.30 a.m. in Indiana for a soccer tournament. And my daughter and I have great, like my kids and I are all best friends, you know, um, and quality time. So I have an eight year old. Can't really coach him at much, but at least once a week or once every two weeks, we go have a date. We go out last week. We went and got frozen yoga, went to Menchie's or whatever. And we just go and we, we have that time together. And my son and I'll have that time together. And as far as my wife and I, like she works with me. Um, we try to spend time together. That's where it suffers. And that's where I need to fix. Um, where my wife and I, because we have three kids and I coach and we have tournaments and this and that, we have three sports, my kid, both of my boys box, my son's doing silver gloves next year. And he's a wrestler. My other boy wrestles and my daughter wrestles and plays soccer. So we have soccer wrestling for all three kids and then boxing for the boys. So yeah, I mean, our time together is usually athletic because that's my strength. But a lot of dads aren't pro bodybuilders who coach strength, right? right? Like they're not. So find something like, dude, if your kid likes to play chess, learn chess, play it with them. Dude, I coached soccer. I literally had never played. So I played soccer one year when I was 10 years old and I was the goalkeeper because I had no fear and I used to just run into stuff and it was 10 <laughs> years old. It was wreck. I would get destroyed on a club level, but you know, I went and I I watched every YouTube video I could on airplanes, wherever I could. And then I went and I actually got certified as a USSF soccer coach. Learn what your kids love. Don't, don't make your kids love what you love, figure out what they love and go be a part of it. Like be an active parent and be a cool parent. You know, one way I, I get, I get away with things a lot like that. A lot of kids would be embarrassed of their parents. I don't want to shame people for not being in shape. I don't. But here's, here's what works for me. And you'll find something that works for you. That might be similar. All of the kids follow me on Instagram at, at my kid's school, like, and my kids, they have big followings because of me. So for me, I'm actually cool. And I know a lot of kids like, Oh, come on, dad. My kids are actually like, yep. My, my dad's like a pro bodybuilder. It's cool. Right? So it's different, but you need to find where you can be cool within your kid's life. If they think you're cool, like it, it, it goes a long way because my dad was a dork. He was a Jewish accountant who wore big glasses, you know, like, and I was like, oh, my dad's a dork. Find a way to be kind of cool. 
You know, whatever that is. And I'm not saying be the guy who lets the kids drink in front of you. That's stupid. I'm mm -hmm. just saying like, there's got to be a way you can relate to your kid. A lot of parents are like, oh man, the kids don't like what I like. You know, my buddy, he's a soccer coach, Scotty. He lives up in, uh, he actually just moved uh, outside of, uh, what was it? Uh, Cleveland, Tennessee, up that way, up towards Memphis. And um, I mean, he's, um, his kid's not into soccer. So he's learning about Barbie dolls. His one kid, this is a great story. You're going to love this story. This is an entrepreneur story. Scotty's a, amazing soccer coach club level soccer coach his kid has autism right severely autistic and he loves candy scotty moved out to tennessee and i'll give you his link you got to see this candy store is amazing he opened a candy store because his kid loves candy scotty doesn't eat carbs but he loves right. candy stores we went to nashville and there's that beautiful candy store downtown on mm -hmm. broadway and his kid was like it was like disneyland like he was like, Oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Next, like you know, a kid in a candy store. To, Scotty moves from Illinois to Tennessee to open a candy store. Wow. Amazing wow. story. Amazing yeah. story. He's not the guy he's like British and he's in, he, he's like, he's one of those coaches. Like my daughter loved him. Cause he's really mean. He's my guy. Like we always, we always watch boxing together, but what a, what an, what a story, like what a story. And that's his passion because his kid who's right. autistic loves candy so he opens a candy store what better drive and motivation than that cashed out all his retirement and went there for it but dude i was like because we were actually we had a similar soccer tournament in memphis our my son got to play his old team it was amazing i used to coach these kids and it was like it was it was so emotional because you know these kids you know i kind of helped them grow up and um you know nonetheless i'm sitting there at dinner with scotty and the kids are doing their thing i'm like scotty i'm like what, what's he's like I'm opening a fucking candy store. I'm like, yeah, British accent. I'm like, you're fucking kidding me. Awesome. I was so proud of him because he's been stuck in the club soccer rat race, which is hard. It's hard to be a club soccer coach. Is that that's a tough life. Yeah. Great right. dude. But there's, there's my story. Like that's a guy, that guy's a hero. Me. I'm just a guy who kind of does stuff. Scotty. Now that's a hero. Well, let's talk. Let's, let me ask you, let's dig into that a little bit. The, how do you then, have the children respect you. Here's here's what too many fathers do. Maybe mothers too, but I, I talk mostly to men. So here's what fathers do is they they go too far in trying to buy the children's love however they can, to try to buy that bonding with the kid rather than go out and earn it. So I, the 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 question is how do you do things with the kid um that that that, that the kid likes? while still making sure that that child grows up while you're off to work every day and respects who and what you are. Well, here's the thing. My, I've never hit my kids. I don't, I'm an, I'm an non-aggression guy, despite being a former boxer. Um, the only time I hit people is if they're in headgear and I'm in a ring. <laughs> right. um, my kids are scared shitless of me. They, they respect it. So, I mean, if I, if I get serious, my kids know you just have to draw the line. You have to have your limits. You have right. to be willing right. to take things away. You have to parent. I always tell them this too. I'm not your friend. I'm your dad. Mm -hmm. And our dynamic is that of now my daughter's 16. It changes as they get older. Right. Sure. Like I, I always had this theory before I had kids that if your kid's not right by 11, you're kind of screwed. You got that zero to 11 range where you really have to instill their ethics and instill their values and it's still their belief system, whether it's God or whatever it is your people believe in, you know, and for me, you know, um, we're, I'm, I'm more of an agnostic Jew type guy. I'm a Jewish, but I'm not raising my kid in the faith. I'm, I'm raising my kids to make their own decisions, but we also have to lead by example. Like if you go to the grocery store and I'm a talker, as you could probably tell, I'll talk to the people checking me out. If there's no one behind me for a half hour, yeah. like I'm that guy who talks to everybody for a long friggin' time. Cause I like people. If your kids see you being respectful to people, if your kids see you being nice to people, if your kids know that respecting others and calling people, sir, and ma'am, I don't give a shit if it's politically incorrect. My kids are going to call people, sir, and ma'am. And if they say, Hey, I actually identify as a ma'am. I'm like, fuck. Okay, ma'am. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things where you just got to lead by example. There's a reason my kids eat healthy and exercise hard. There's a reason my daughter was able to cut three pounds over Christmas to make weight for a wrestling meet, dropping a whole weight class because that's all they know. They just know hard work and they see me. And, you know, even when I was traveling a lot, which I still do quite a bit, 
you know, they know that, okay, dad's got to go work because a man's mm-hmm. number one goal, a number one role is to provide period. Don't care if people hate that a man should provide. That doesn't mean your wife shouldn't work. That doesn't mean it. That means if you're a man, you provide your job is to go out and your job is to make money. Your job is to support your family. And if you're not doing that, you're failing. Now, and I think the flip side to that also is, I, it's funny, I just answered a question last night on Twitter about this. The question was sh- how men feel about staying at home and raising the kids versus uh, mom going out and working. And like you said, the caveat we all have to say is we don't, I, I mean, I don't care what women do one way or the other, but if I had my druthers coming where I come from, had my dad been home, I'd be in prison or dead. I mean, I almost <laughs> ran into all those things anyway, but because it was my mother, <laughs> Right. My mother has a completely different take on all of these things than my dad ever did. And if it wasn't for my mother, I wouldn't be sitting here today. So I say just from my own experience, mom needed to be at home. Dad needed to be out on the road because that was the that 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 is what they were both built for. Myself personally, I, I, I can't stay in the house. I have to go do something. And my wife loves staying with the kids. Uh, mm-hmm. And that has worked very well. So I don't disagree with. With what you're saying, it's sad in today's world. We have to always caveat that, though, isn't it?